keep this like an hour. Yes, sure. Yeah, a new, a new episode of uh, For All Man Can dropped. So, yeah, I got a, like about 20 minutes ago. Fuck, really? Yeah. Oh, he was talking. Sorry. Good. Yeah, sorry. No, we're good. <laughs> it's just not my fault as producer. Okay. This morning, but I'm never sure what I'm gonna see. They're always having a good time down on the Rambo cast. The more sure they bring the best of me. Lord, I was born rambling, man. <laughs> trying to make a living and doing the best I can. That I was born a rambling man. Nice. Actually, I'm surprised it took you so long to do a song with rambling in it. I know. Well, I've done a few with rambling in oh, it. Have you? Yeah, that's like that's the like the one that yeah. When you think of rambling, that's have the, you done ramble on yet? That would be one Jay. Ramblecast. Ramblecast. I asked Jay to be a part of this, but. He said maybe he had some kind of oh, whatever, person. you know. You know, Jay, he's got he got a I don't. Cut first. He, he got a he got a <laughs> he got a splinter or something. Oh, God. oh, I don't know. Take it out. I can't record. Dude, anyway. like, I, I had like a bump pop up on my finger the other day. I was like, what the fuck is that? And so, you know, like, I don't fucking know. Fucking monkey box, dude. It's something. Yeah. I just got the razor blade out though and cut it and then it's it fine. This fucking but thing on my neck. It just, it, just, it just means the Viagra was working in the wrong spot. I guess it's so. like yeah. ingrown. It was hard. Hair. <laughs> oh, I hate those. I had, I, I, had, I, had one, pots. I had one right here. <laughs> right on my chin. It's like, God, yeah, I hate those things. Worst. But anywho. So, so Cindy was. Cindy was like going, why, why, why have you shaved? I go, I hate shaving. I hate yeah. shaving, but it's, you know, I never Me mind too. getting a haircut. No, I never mind getting my haircut. So there should be a choice in life, right? Yeah. No beard. Give me my hair back. Sure. Well, no I hair don't... on my back. Give me my hair back on top of my head. I can't grow a beard. So <laughs> yeah, well, maybe some, someday when you hit puberty, I know, it will it's... happen. It's going to be one of those, it's, it sucks. Like, I, I basically have, like, the, if you ever saw Joe Dirt back in the 90s, I had the, same, garden, issue. I had, I had the same issue. It just kind of grows in all the, all the white trash areas. It's just like, yeah, just like a, just a, just a chin beard, you know, a, a jawline beard. Just all just it's like, oh. I've had some variation of this for like the last, like, 10 years, maybe. I, I hate, well, well mine's all gray. I mean, just all. I'm getting a little bit of gray it's on the, on the uh, outsides of the chin. But I said I'll shave tomorrow. I don't have time. I, I gotta I gotta get here early and get everything set up. I can't just arrive at nine twenty nine. Right, right. right. <laughs> um, yeah. So this is like uh, I, I have to work tomorrow, unfortunately. But tomorrow. after tomorrow, it's a dermatology podcast. Says John. <laughs> yeah, that's basically yeah. We're we whatever. We're, Fuck we're off. Gonna be, we're gonna be professionals now. <laughs> we're gonna be we're gonna, we're gonna be master zip poppers or whatever yeah, they're exactly. called. Oh, Couple I can't popper. watch those fucking things. MD. I, I, Nope. nope. Um, so I'm uh, I'm working tomorrow, but my vacation officially starts on Saturday, so oh, I won't be around okay. next week. So um, we'll probably be taking next week off, is what you're saying. We'll be taking. Well, I, I am. You guys. So can... if you well, it would just be Jack and me, and maybe a guest star. But yeah, because then I'll be off. I'll be off the second and third week of July. You know, because I'll be Shit. in San Diego. All right. I'll Nick. We'll work on getting a co-host of three yeah. of us. I'll find okay. somebody. Anybody. Anybody. There you go. Um, it's not. It's not like Chris is hard to replace. Oh, <laughs> Jesus we just, Christ! We, oh, we just need. We, we just need someone who's sitting there putting himself on mute and ignores what's going on. <laughs> I do not ignore what's going on. I put myself on mute because I'm sitting here cracking these fucking things. <laughs> I'm just giving you a hard time. Relax. I know. But you have to understand. Like, this is because I'm, I'm seven and a half months, eight months in of of no vaping. Well, that's great. No nicotine at all. So no I have pot, to have these little right? like. Oh, well, I have definitely have pot. Just you're such a pot form right before we started. But like, I haven't had any nicotine in almost eight months at this point. So I need to have some type of fucking habit. That's gr- that's great, actually. Thank you. So well, I do you guys the justice of of not having listening cracking the sunflower seeds every five seconds. Well, we appreciate that. 
Jackie well, Pretzels, he like he didn't care. You know, he doesn't give a fuck. He has literally zero concern for other people listening to I, him. I'm, I'm, I'm not the fucking producer. I don't, when was the last time I had? When was the last time I had pretzels? <laughs> last time we gave you shit for it. Please, Chris, don't be a mat. <laughs> what do you mean, don't be a mat? When you got a little sensitive when I was picking on you. Oh, that's true. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's the last thing I am. Are you are you are you wearing jeans? No. I did. I did talk to Matt today. He's doing well. That's good. I mean, I texted him. I didn't actually speak to him, but he, he seems like he's doing pretty good. We should just like Thank Facetime you. and bring him into the fucking show. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, no choice. <laughs> just, just, just fight. You're not quitting on us. Fuck you. Yeah, you thought you get away with this. Uh, uh, so this is like, uh, it's it's like vacation eve e for me. But my my uh, my wife and kids are going down tomorrow uh, okay. while I work. So that's a vacation mm-hmm. for you tomorrow. Uh, we'll have to work. Yeah, but so. you, you mean come home, right? Yeah, I'm gonna come home. I'll have, I'll have the house to my so well. My buddy Dave's coming over because he's going up to the Cape as well as, as well. So he's gonna come and crash with me tomorrow, and we're gonna. Uh, I think he's gonna, you know, have a lazy Saturday because we can't technically check okay, in into nice. our place until uh, four o'clock on Saturday. Okay, also, I, I mean, tomorrow is like the worst day to work. I mean, but if you have a lazy Saturday, it's good because you got you got the ending of Stranger right. Things, you got the boys dropping another episode, and for yep. all mankind tomorrow. So yep. Oh, is Stranger Things out tomorrow? Yeah, the yeah, last episodes of the season at midnight tonight. I think yeah, isn't it? yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I'm I'm pretty pretty excited for my my shower beers outside and uh, just seven days of sitting on the nice. beach and. Yeah, you know, use use that sunscreen because you don't want to have to go to a dermatologist. Oh, absolutely. I, I I'm a big fan of SPF shirts, uh, much like the one I'm wearing right now. Yeah, because it's so sunny in my basement. But yeah, I'm I'm very big on sunscreen. Uh, unfortunately, my my wife wasn't for a long period of time, so she's gone through a couple different bouts of cancer. You know, including skin cancer. So. We don't need to go through that anymore. In our house. I have to go get checked. I got all these things on me now because, well, I grew up in San Diego. <laughs> those, are, so those, are, like, those are ticks. Those are ticks, Jack. Yeah. Yeah. We used to put we used to put butter on our. We don't have any deer anymore, so I don't think we have ticks anymore. I, I told you that one time we had deer. I had a tick on my balls once. Oh <gasps> God! Yeah, I looked. I was thinking. Never I was, mentioned oh, ball ticks. No, I. It probably was a married man show. It was but, so. Yeah, it, had, was, it gotten so big. You thought you had a third testicle, right? Like, I saw. It's like. Hey, I'm going to impress the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I, took a, I said, oh, God damn it. So I got some tweezers and just yanked it off. There's a joke in here somewhere. Oh, I don't know. I'm, st- I'm still around. So I guess it's okay. it's been like almost 18 years of the ball tick. So that's but I've, I've had them on. You sit there and you go, what the hell is on? Go, oh, God damn oh, yeah. tick. Just oh, yeah. Tweezers yeah. And- you get, you get t- like, you know, especially when I did archaeology, like you get tickitis, which is when you, when they're not even on you, but you think they're on you because, like, you just and it's like the creep, like a spider, like that tingle yeah. feeling, you know. You're just like, yeah, my, my dog used to get them all the time. I mean, I, I live right next to like a um, like a swampy stream in my, in my backyard, so we have lots of mosquitoes and ticks around here. So I actually pay to have someone come and spray my yard every three weeks to come and just oh. keep them at bay. Um, and yeah, it so, works pretty well. Since they, because we have a little creek that goes through our backyard too, but since the deer have left, since they destroyed the whole, their, you know, yeah, their, their habitat. habitat. Yeah. So we haven't seen them yet because the deer would come up, you know, we'd feed them and they'd have these huge ticks on them. I'm like, hey, that sucks for you. And the Baltics. Yeah. Baltics <laughs> is absolutely the episode title this week. Um, <laughs> the vacation. This episode has been brought to you by Jack's Sack Ticks. Sack Ticks. Um, it had been a lot yeah. easier now to take it off because. It, I would, I could just do it by my feet, you know. <laughs> I wouldn't, even, I wouldn't even have to, you know, bend down. Just Jack's got old man balls now. It, ha- it, what are you gonna do? It happens. Yeah. It happens. Again, like um, I said, no, nobody prepared me for being having to sit on my balls one day. No one ever oh. said it. Someday, hey, you're gonna sit on your balls because you're older. So Again, there is, I know that's happened to you, Chris. There's a story about that from Comic Con about. 10 years ago i think i think this is the 10 year and holy shit this is the 10 year anniversary for anyone out there listening to nut 11 (laughs) nut 11 was discovered 10 years ago on the rooftop of the hilton and why nut 11 well because when you sit in your nut you'll never forget oh it's it is the worst pain are you sure it's 10 i thought i didn't think he went to comic con 2012 no oh, shit! Eleven years ago, yeah. yeah. My, we, we it was uh, rain, man. 
Yeah. Well, no, because I, I came home from <laughs> Comic Con and found out that I was going to be a father when I got home. Right. That's right. Yeah. The last Comic Con I went to. <laughs> Luckily, 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 you had you planted the seed before you went to Comic Con, right? That's true. Three months prior, or not, maybe a little bit less than that. Um, yeah, I th- I think what makes the pain so bad is you just don't you don't. It's not like someone coming up to you and kicking you in the balls or getting hit the ball. It's you just have no. You just don't know what's going to happen. You sit oh, down. Oh, it's and the go, worst. And you go. Ah, I said, I remember I was going to clip my nails or something. Sat down on top of the toilet seat cover. I was like, ah, and flipped onto the I'm on the bathroom floor. Going, oh, yeah, dude, sit, sitting on your nuts is no joke. That sucks. <laughs> it's 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 the worst pain I've ever had. I'd rather have root canal. Yeah. With, I've with it, no, I've, I've with done no, it once. No, it was not pretty. It was not. Pretty. Yeah, I think I've done it twice. But now I, I I do prepare myself when I sit down now. Yeah. So this this is all part of the same conversation that year we talked about nut eleven, and then we also talked about powdering your balls. And everyone oh, like yeah. everyone's like, "What the fuck are you talking about, dude? What do you mean you powder your balls? You put gold bond in your nuts?" And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, you, you do. You like if you don't, you're gonna have ball chafe. And there's there's actually some things in life are are not you you just never want. And, and I've, ball ne- I've never I've, I've never had ball chafe. I don't think really. I've never, it, I've it, never powdered my balls. I don't. No, no, powdering your balls. You grew, you been, from getting you, ball no, I, yeah, I've yeah, never, yeah. I've never done it. And I've never had it. So, but you grew up in a dry climate. That's the thing that Chris, like East Coasters, especially Southerners. Like, well, I've been on the East Coast for twenty. years. I know years. for a long time, but I bet you. How many times have you really been athletic though? Since in the twenty years that you've been out there, aside from being on an ice rink, I mean, you're not out there it, playing soccer. You know. Well, you, you sweat pretty good in a, in an ice. When you, people think you freeze in an ice rink, you're you sweat more you in sweat. an ice rink than anywhere else. I, I, I would, I would picture a hockey player having. Well, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, you would. You, you'd have you sweaty would. balls. Yeah, you, need, you need absorbents. Yeah, but that's what, yeah. Plus, you, plus you're, you just, I'm wearing, you grew up, plus you're, yeah. you're wearing a cup too. So true. There's no, yeah. there's no breathing going on down there. So anyways, like that conversation <laughs> popped up about powdering your balls. Yeah. And I do remember that. It's, it's a necessary thing, man. Um, I actually have liquid ball powder now. I love it. I remember you you recommended I, if I remember correctly, you recommended you a product. Yeah. yeah, ballsy. Yeah, that's what that's I amazing. <laughs> it's fucking amazing. I went for a hike the other day with my with my wife and, and Emma, and we went, it was fucking 90 degrees and sunny and just gross and humid. And I lathered that shit up before I left the house, and it was fucking perfect. <laughs> awesome. Oh, yeah. No ball. I mean, are you, there was balls. Are, 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 you, are like, you coming, Chris? One second. <sighs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> airing it out the side of the shorts like the whole night um yeah liquid ball powder stuff's amazing highly liquid recommend all right I, like i said i don't i don't do any exercise and i mow the lawn that's about it yeah anywho that's my about like the majority of this podcast so far has been about balls yeah it's been a lot about balls <laughs> well at least it's inform it's informative yeah it, it, it is it is for I mean, it's not like population. it's useless information well, I think everybody out there knows somebody with balls. Right? Yeah, that's so, true. So it's it, it. This can this is information for everybody out there. Yeah, balls suck sometimes, man. Really yeah, they do. Yeah, I'm glad I'm not. I'm not where you two guys are at yet. Yeah, I know they get longer as you get older, but I'm glad I'm not sitting on mine yet. So I've only sat on them once, and it was an awkward <laughs> sit. That's the only reason why. I'm, I'm, I'm to the point. I'm to the point now where I blame the cat for tripping. But it's actually <laughs> tripped on my balls. It's just like, you know, I, it's just like, boom, what happened? A goddamn cat again. Good. So you're you got to do what you got to do. You're going to need a wheelbarrow soon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. dude. You see that picture of the guy who has to wear an upside down hoodie? Oh my <laughs> <For> his balls. He's got elephant ties the nuts. He's going to wear an upside down hoodie for pants. Just for his I, nuts. I, oh I haven't seen that, man. That's, that's, I'm going to uh, pull it up for you right now. See no, you no, 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 no. I don't yeah, need to see it. Happened. It's happening. No, it's bad enough you send the big dick pictures. I, I don't need to see it. I haven't sent a big dick picture to you. Yeah, that was early code. Not in a while. <laughs> you see the guy You see the guy on the plane? Oh, good God. Oh, God. That dude. That's, a, that, that's an ACDC song. I've got big balls. You got good balls. Who's got the biggest that balls of the ball? An upside down oh. hooded sweatshirt just for his wow. balls. Man, that is. I feel bad for that guy. 
Oh, you uh, but you see the guy in the plane. The guy in the plane. He thought it'd be funny to send everybody on the oh, plane a picture of his dick. Oh God! So he airdropped it. He the, air, yeah. yeah, he airdropped it, and somebody I guess accepted it and knew that it was him. So they came to the, the, the flight attendant. Goes, why would you do that? Oh, I just thought it was funny. <laughs> so he got he got taken off the plane, got arrested. I, what, what, who thinks that's funny? Especially especially today with today's climate. Right, knowing you have to be just oblivious to know that that just isn't. He probably thought he wasn't going to get caught. And he was an old dude too. Yeah, and there was somebody. There was two people sitting next to him. They left two out of showing off know. his California raisins to the entire coach. <laughs> <laughs> but what? 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 I guess. And the people I was watching the it was on TikTok. People in the TikTok say, "Yeah, that happened to me once." So I guess it's a thing. Oh, I've been airdropped a dick pic before. Really on a plane? Yeah. yeah. No, in my store. On your store, in my store, yeah. You get people come into you know any like a place. There's a whole bunch of people, and they'll they'll, they'll share out photos. It's happened before. Well, I, I did it because the service took way too long. I was just a little oh, well. pissed off, <laughs> and I just thought that was. I go, I go. That come on, dude. That's not cool. I mean, my immediate thought was like, I guess because it does tell you like, oh, like. Chris Scott, you know, Chris would like to send you a, a photograph, you know, do you accept? But like I was, when you said someone re- knew it was him, I was like, how could she identify him by, or he, how could you identify someone by their balls? I was like, oh no, I get the name. <laughs> Cause I mean, thinking of like Chris Rock, you know, or I think it was Chris Rock's bit back a long time ago. It was like, you know, they were looking at Michael Jackson. It's like, you know, describe, is this the one you saw? It's like, he's like, I couldn't find my dick in a lineup and I know my dick like this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's like when when Clinton was going through his problems, he had a crooked dick. So that's how they knew. That's how they could tell. A little curve. You know, yeah, a little curve to it. So that's how. Speaking they of knew. Just weird shit like that, did you see where R. R. Kelly got thirty years? Thirty years. Thirty years. He should have. He should have really got life. But it's not like he's just one time. Well, he's, he doesn't have that many years left. He's not going to no. last. Yeah, well, it's like that, like that, that Nazi guard uh, over in over in Europe. You know, he's 101 years old. They sentenced him to yeah. five years. That's like, yep. fuck, like, you know, like, and and he's yeah. hiding his face. Like at this point, I think it's fucking awesome. Like <laughs> yeah. the guy, the guy, like lived his life thought he's gonna get away scot free, but he's gonna yeah. fucking die in prison. They right? don't, like, they don't. The rat he is because I was sitting there going, how many of them can still be alive? Oh god, okay, my, not minus many. one now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I said, so I was like, I got good, rotten, die in jail. It's like, He's like killed within minutes. I just kill. He probably will die like as soon as he gets there, just from the shock, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. but it's like, a, it's like it's kind of like what you're saying, like 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 Pearl Harbor, Pearl Harbor survivors. I think there's like one left. I think now that's it. Really? Yeah, like there's either one or two. You know, because I mean, you think I about s- it. These guys were over eight, or at a minimum eighteen because this is before the war. You know, uh, yeah. and so it's like. Yeah, they're they're all getting up there. I uh, I used to know a few of them, but back in San Diego, but I don't know. Hmm. I guess they're not around anymore. Um, I did see Elvis. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. Oh yeah, what did you think? I gave it an A plus. Wow. I thought I thought I thought it was out fucking standing, and I know some people. If you if you don't like Elvis, you're you're not. I don't bother. If you don't like Elvis, you don't know anything about Elvis, just leave the building because it's you're not going to... But I thought it was... Because they, do, they give you... A, they Thank you. They give you a lot about Colonel Tom Parker, which, like the Kurt Russell movie... I mean, all the movies on Elvis before really didn't show the shady side behind the scenes what happened right. to Elvis. This one does. And Austin um, Butler, I'm not kidding. At one point, both Cindy and I, we said after the movie, I go, I forgot this was... A, a movie. I thought I was thought I was watching a documentary on documentary on Elvis. That's awesome because he did yeah. such a fantastic and he's actually singing and the performance and, oh, cool. and just everything he's doing. That's really is, cool. It's just incredible. It's a long movie. Yeah. And at first, it, it's kind of all, it's kind of all over the place. That's showing his childhood and what how how he developed his you know singing style. But they did not show his balls, which I <laughs> I was I was pissed. <laughs> Look, um, I mean, everyone thinks when he was doing his, you know, his hip movements that he was being sexual. Really, he's just adjusting because they were so big that he, he, had, exactly. you know, he was getting. He, he, didn't didn't have, ball he didn't have any. He didn't, yeah. he didn't have any ball powder. Yeah, but yeah, I if if I I couldn't recommend it enough. I just thought it was, and I said Austin Excellent. Butler 
give him the Academy Award now. He's he was that good. Yeah, I think I think I, I think I wrote that to you, or maybe we discussed it last week. But like that that was my only worry about the film is that with it being Tom Hanks playing the Colonel, because the Colonel was a dick. And yeah. and like I wondered if Tom Hanks could pull it off because like when do you ever see Tom Hanks really be an asshole? You know, I I, and, I said I said this is the first time I can remember a Tom Hanks character I did not like. Okay, I mean I, I he does a fantastic job of being an asshole. I I, di- I didn't like him at all. It's probably got to be pretty like you know therapeutic for him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean he's, he's, he's do something. He's not Mr. Rogers in this one. No, but he's 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 like you know everyone's every guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like in everything he's ever done, like he's always been a lovable character. Literally, yeah. every single movie he's ever done. Well, not the, not the time he was on Happy Days. He tried to fight the Fonz. Oh yeah, he wasn't cool then. But yeah, I, but no, he, he he's like I said. I go God. I just I hate him. Hate him. And found out later on that when, well, uh, Parker, what, yeah, I mean, when sure Colonel that... Parker died, he owed thirty million dollars to the uh, International Hotel. Oh shit! He was the, wow. the reason he he was a gambleholic. He was. They Game show a shape they sh- when sh- he goes to do the Vegas show, and 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 Elvis is getting pumped back up and getting his his career is coming back. And it's just the uh, it's what he did to Elvis. Was basically, he, he he killed him. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he, he not only, I mean, he, it's a double edged sword. And I'm sure the uh, my internet's kind of being shitty today. Um, you know, it's kind of a double edged sword because, you know, without the Colonel, Elvis couldn't have been Elvis. But, you know, he, the Colonel made 51 cents out of every dollar Elvis ever made. Uh, and because I noticed I'm breaking it up. But because, uh, you know, because the Colonel had like an arrest warrant out for him in Europe, that's the reason why Elvis never toured Europe. And then, uh, you know, El, you know, and you know, and the Colonel was the one that pushed him to go into movies. He's like, ah, you know, you can only be a rock star for so many years, like going to movies. And that's the reason why I think a lot of the '60s output of Elvis isn't that good. It's because like all those songs, even though some of them are really good, they're all tied to those movies. You know, like so they're not like right. an actual kick-ass song right. like you know Elvis could have had. Well, he he's probably not wrong about being a because a, singers eventually lose there, but he didn't. Even when no. he was strung out and he was you know putting on weight he still had the great great voice but yeah it's, it's a fantastic it's a long movie but it's fantastic i enjoyed every minute of it i'll have to give it a shot yeah i i started it's watching um, how you can be broke <laughs> well if you watch if you if you watch this you uh explains you why one, he yeah. it's, it explains why he he's because he fi- he fires him but then he there's a reason why he can't yeah, I gotta check it out. Um, but I started watching on your all's reference or, or yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. referral. Started watching Peaky Blinders. Mm. Um, so far, I'm digging it. I think I'm like three or four episodes in. Okay. Um, uh, to the first season, um, but I'm digging it, man. It's kind of like it reminds me. I, I can see why you guys like it so much because it's yeah. completely like um, Deadwood meets. Um, Sopranos, kind of. Sopranos, you know, yeah, like so that's a good, yeah. that's a good way yeah, to mash them good. up. Yeah, yeah, you know, and and, it's, and the, it's and the cool music's story. kind of modern. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's modern music. I thought I, I like that. I thought that was actually really rad how they how they pulled that off. Yeah, um, and, and I've, never and, wanted, I've never wanted to smoke a cigarette more in my entire fucking life. <laughs> for real, for real. <laughs> and, and you, yeah, you'll get into like whiskey too. It's like oh, like you know, oh yeah, you know, and then yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and you will hear over the course of the the, the seasons like. So many variations of Red Right Hand. You're just like, like how many people did they get to cover that song? Right. No. So I mean, so, so far I'm digging it. I know it just ended. The series is over now, I believe. Yeah. But um, mm-hmm. I heard that there might be optioning a movie potentially for. I could see that because the way that it ends is satisfying, but it's also a little open ended. So you cool. could, if you wanted to. Well, they're, yeah. you'll find out too. They're not afraid to kill anybody off. No, and I, I mean, although the first episode was pretty cool, like they they had to like maybe it was the second episode ever, where they had to like uh, pretend kill that dude because he stabbed the Italian guy. Right. Yeah. I was like, that's kind of badass. So like, how do they actually do that? Like, what do they do to make that? Did they not? He got knocked out because he definitely fell forward, right? And and then he woke up on the boat later. 
Um, okay. And they just well, improvised yeah. some type of like blood or something like that. That was kind of cool. Well, it was pretty. Yeah, they probably did some improvised kind of blood, but I mean, the concussion of just the blank at that close range of his head probably would knock you out. out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's how uh, Brandon Lee died. Yeah. And Rust too soon. Yeah. And and the guy from uh, uh, Eric, uh, John Eric Hexham. I think that's his name. Yeah. Every, anyway, every girl uh, was in love with him. I so just far, finished. I'm in. I, I just finished the first episode of season six, so I do like how I do like how they took care of a character that passed away in real life. Time, yeah, so time got, yeah. I started watching that, and then um, Nick, you're mentioning before. Uh, I, I didn't realize it actually starts tonight, but the um, for all mankind has been a nothing short of great uh, this season so oh, far. Yeah. Um. It has everything, man. It's got science fiction. It's got the whole espionage bullshit in there. It's got, um, like, crazy storylines, right? And it, it, it's such parallels to what we're going through now with, like, SpaceX and stuff. So it, it's mm-hmm. just really kind of cool to see that telling of it. But um, I have such a crush on Chantal Van Santen, by the way. I oh, think God. she's just unbelievable. Who's Chantel Van Sant? Which character? She's only she's, been in a few series, but yeah, go ahead, Chris. Sorry. Yeah, so she's she's the wife of 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 Ed, Ed's wife. Then ex wife. Have you watched the first season yet, Jack? I'm six episodes in the first season. Oh, okay. Every time so I'll Ed's, start back up. Ed's wife. She she runs the bar at the at the. Uh, at the I think that's in season two. Oh, uh, maybe it's season two. Anyways, uh, um, she's the the dark haired. Uh, you know, Ed's the main astronaut in season one. You know, who trains all the women astronauts. Astronauts. It's his wife that you know. Oh, okay, first. okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And that's yeah, what's so funny about was... that's what's funny about this season four is that you know it cracks me up because you know it's supposed to be in ninety five, but you know it started out in sixty nine. Is this season? Uh, is this season four already? Sorry, season three, three, three. three. Sorry, okay. season three. Right. three. But you know, so they went from the late sixties, early seventies to eighty six to ninety five, and then you have someone like her who's thirty five playing someone that's supposed to be. You know, uh, you do the fifties. Yeah, in her fifties, it's like you can't put a little gray wig on somebody and make me think they're <laughs> that old. But you're that. You know, She's such looking. a like, smoke show for a fifty-something, the early sixty-year-old. Yeah, yeah, you're like, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's so good. She, I, she's in a bunch of she, she was in. Um, she was in uh, One Tree Hill. For those who watch One, One Tree Hill. Hill, she's also the uh, a, a voice of one of the characters of the video mm-hmm. game Apex Legends. So all the video game nerds out there might uh, might recognize her. As, yeah, every time I say, I'm a, oh, go ahead. Well, I was like the women on that show. Like I, the, I didn't, I didn't know who she was I, until because uh, I never watched One Tree Hill, this series. But I knew um, Sarah. Uh, I forget her name from Alcatraz. Uh, oh, the blonde, yeah, the blonde. And then I knew uh, the skinny dark. I interviewed her. her. Oh, did you? Yeah. yeah, she was an absolute fucking sweetheart, and yeah. we may or may not have flirted. I'm just saying. <laughs> Uh, but then, like the tall, skinny brunette who you know does the football pass in space, uh, she yeah. was on a, a Canadian series called Bomb Girls, which is actually very good. It never got the credit it was due, but it's about the like the Rosie the Riveter type women in normal yeah. war. Oh, okay, and it's really that's a good series. I think it was only two seasons, but it's the thing. Series. Yeah, I'll tell you the, the the underlying theme of this show is just, it's it's got loads of powerful powerful women. Um, yeah, yeah, in it, which I think is great. But, who was that? Um, who was that? But, that was Chris. I'm oh, sorry. A friend of mine calling me. <laughs> okay. Uh, Not bad. In the future, if, if your phone's on, I'm going to have to give you a five minute timeout. Understood. Thank you. Let's well, just uh, be you and me talking, talking, Jack. That's awesome podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, no, every time I go out to go get, I go, okay, I'm going to catch up on all the uh, Apple shows. Well, then I got to. Oh, I got to finish Peaky Blinders. Oh, I got to finish. I got to finish the boys next. I got to finish. There's so many. Cr- if you'd stop rewatching Mash, you could get to this. Stuff. I I don't have Hulu anymore, so I'm done with. Oh, okay. I'm done with. It. I'm not rewatching anything right now. I just finished. Like I just finished Obi Wan. So. Oh, okay. I I liked it. I liked it from start to finish. Oh, of course, the final episode is really good. Yeah, the, the end's solid. Yeah. But I liked it all the way through. I told sent Matt a message saying, "Hey, I loved it. I thought it was great." I don't know about you guys, but I, I, mean, I know you guys and, were kind of complaining about it. Yeah, me and Chris have – we're more on the it's okay spectrum. Like, you know, I can get into it, but I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> I can see where you guys said it should have been just been one movie. 
Yeah. Well, I, I read an article by the writer who it really helped me understand. because So he had a Obi-Wan trilogy in mind when he wrote this. He wrote the, this this series is the first movie. It's all he actually got paid to write. But he had three movies in mind. So this was supposed to be a two hour and 20 minute movie. He goes, and then they contacted him and said, oh, now we're making it into a series. And they took a two and a half or two hour, 20 minute movie and made it into six episodes. He goes, so they extremely stretched out his story. He got fucked. fucked. Yeah. And they did not consult him or ask him to write any of the six episodes. They just took his main points and then stretched it out over six hours. So that's, uh, uh, yeah. So that's another, I was like, okay, now I get it. You are like, why it's one of the reasons why it had a lot of holes in it. Because I was, I, I go, yeah, I see what they say. It just should have just been one movie. I mean, it just, it, you know, from, and you got to try, of course, the whole time it's everything's happening. I'm like, going, okay, is that, did that happen in New Hope? I mean, it, did we know about this thing, about that? Or do we, I'm trying to remember things that happen because we know they're not going to die, right? All right. the characters, the, the main characters from A New Hope that are in this, uh, we know they're not going to die, but then we're just like going, okay, what's going on here? What's going on here? Did that happen to Obi Wan? Did that did that did that really happen? <laughs> you know, where the I mean, I don't know. Never takes off his well, damn robe. How am I supposed to know? <laughs> well, like early on, like one of my complaints was that I could tell where they stretched it. And you know, and Chris and I were kind of the same opinion on this, is like in the previews before the series even started, they showed us all the really cool stuff in the teasers for episode one. So when you watch episode one, having watched the teasers, it's kind of really a boring episode. Cause you're like, well, I already know what's happening. But if I hadn't watched those, I probably would have liked episode one. See, but I then what I, I didn't see the teasers. Right. So that's, I mean, but like, then you look at uh, young Leia, she gets kidnapped by, you know, the red hot chili peppers. And, uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. and I said this to Chris a couple of times, like, I felt that originally, probably in the movie, Reva, you know, the third sister, uh, the black Sith woman, was probably originally supposed to kidnap her in the movie version. Uh, And then you just kind of skip over to episode four. But they needed to stretch it, so they let these random people kidnap her, only for her to be re-kidnapped again by, uh, you know, so I was like, oh, they just kind of threw in some more crap here. The only thing I was sick of, they couldn't, she couldn't be seen doing it because the senator and all that stuff. I'm like going, that was the only way I could... uh, (laughs) <laughs> I'm laughing at what John said. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't right. take off his robe because of Baltics. <laughs> yeah, see, I, did I you just, not? Did you not uh, see the coat? The, the coat, like how big it was, and they're leaving the base. Well, that's you know, that's why Darth Vader has that. He was carrying his ball. Yeah. Like, my my biggest beef with the entire show is that you know, and, and we said this before, and then Nick, you just kind of alluded to it as well. It's like it was built up as a as a Darth Vader Obi Wan show, and it wasn't. Right. Is there going like, to be a season two? Yeah. I'm so I, 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 I don't want there to be a season two. There's going to be, um, and then we're going to all get be. fucking mad about it. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. but like, but the thing is, though, it, it I, was definitely built up as an Obi Wan versus Vader show. It yeah. wasn't. And it was this Reva character, which in light it's, of yeah, all of the bullshit arc. that she got online, yeah. this has nothing to do with that. Um, she, there was there was a boatload of racist assholes out there that were starting a ton of shit about her and as an actress and portraying this character. That aside, I thought the character fucking sucked. Like I just didn't like the character. I thought that it was just a flat, predictable bullshit, like you know, extra character that was thrown in there. And, and as a night sister, like not I'm sorry, not night sister, as a, as one as one of the third sisters or the fourth sister, or whatever it is. Sister um, Sledge. Inquisitor. Like yeah. inqu- of the Inquisitors, right? Like so like it was those those characters are like supremely badass. Like and it she, she her character of Reva should have been way better than that. Mm-hmm. Like I think they, they did not do that whole could, group could it of have inquisitors been, any justice. Could like, it have been never gonna allow her to be evil. amazing. Yeah. They were never going to allow her. To that's what I was about to say because, spoiler alert, she's her best scenes as an actress is when she wasn't angry mm-hmm. and was showing a compassionate side. Yeah, in the last episode. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm just, I'm just saying that that's what that's what looked. But she that's did a better what, that's job. A, but you know, this it's things like that that I had issues with. It's like um, I wrote to Chris early on. I was like, okay, so this can I, can I stop? Can I stop you there? Sure. At this time, we're going to take 
a commercial break. Fine. So early on, like I wrote to, to Chris and Matt and I was like, look, I was like, and I not Jack. Chris. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with Chris. It's like, she's, I, I didn't believe her as a character. I was like, because a, if she's meant to be evil, then she's acting too much like a spoiled, whiny person that I don't believe is an evil character. If she's going to be someone who turns good, then it's too obvious. It's like she's obviously trying to do something else. So it's like I just never believed her as a character. And then the, the but, thing that is that, laugh, but that's not the actress's fault. That's the that's writer's the writing. fault. That's the she writer's could, fault. She could clearly yeah. act. Right. So that, it's, that's it's what like, we were okay. saying is that like it's, it's the writer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah. yeah so, so, uh, Jeremy the chest says okay, the Obi Wan series was basically book book of Boba mm-hmm. Fett with lightsabers and Vader, but not much more. Um, yeah, I, I, I do agree with you to a, to a point. I, I think that they they realized that and they tried to do some things to kind of switch things up and and make, and put some distance between those two shows. But I mean, you 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 can you can say that about almost every Star Wars movie, right? So you're looking at like kind of like the whole. Um, like Logan slash, you know, the gunslinger, like, uh, what's that, what's the story, that famous storyline about the, you know, the gunslinger with the escorting the kid essentially, uh, or the, like there's a couple of Shane, Shane. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. Shane, Logan, Shane's, Shane, Shane is the Mandalorian. Boba Fett, Mandalorian, all the same. Like, and, and like for the first like two or three episodes of Obi-Wan, that's what it was. Mm. It was. Yeah. And, and it felt that way. And I was reading somewhere as well that like, you know, they came. They came with a script, and it was like, "No, you gotta make this into a TV show." So they go back to the back to the drawing board and convert this three part movie into a TV show. And then Dave Filoni stepped up and was like, "Dude, this is too much like the fucking Mandalorian. <laughs> go back and fix it." And they had, to, and you and you could tell, you could you could tell in when you're watching it. It was like it was could, the, it was the same similar plot. You you can tell like right when you're watching it. Like, that's what my biggest beef was when they released a two hour premiere of the first two episodes. Mm-hmm. I was like. Really, and you could tell it after that second, the third episode. They, they, you could tell they, they had to pivot, and they, they, the feel of the show changed, but it felt like a little too awkward, like smack in the face, you know, and the, and the way how how that show pivoted around episode three slash four, um, and then but then the last two episodes they delivered on right. So I think they, you could tell they, they really they, they put all of their all of their balls into that last uh, the last two episodes. We're back, we're back to balls. I know. Had to tie it back into the sack somehow. The, the, the um, actress that played uh, they killed the, it. The, the actress that played Leia was she was fantastic. I, I loved her. She got a yeah. lot of shit. I mean, people were upset oh, really? about her. People were really? upset about that character, and I thought that she was great. I thought she, she was. Pl- she was. She she was playing Le- uh, Leia. I mean, she she was. That's how Leia's personality yeah. is. Yeah, but like it's also one of those things. Like I agree, I I enjoyed the actress. I thought she nailed the part that was written for her. Um, but I I agree with some of the slight beefs that I've read about it. In that, you know, like you you always want a character to grow, and this character came out being well, a new she's hope only Leia ten. of like yeah, I know, but like, but I'm saying, but she came out written as a new hope Leia as like I'm. I'm stubborn. I'm, I know what I'm doing. I was like, and it would have been better for her at least to show some kid elements, especially like when Obi-Wan first rescues her to be a scared child, but she doesn't like, she's just like, I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. And, and to me, it was just one of those things like a kid really wouldn't act like that. But But Leia never showed any fear. Did she? When, when, when was Leia ever really afraid? When someone was going to mess up her cinnamon roll hair, maybe. Nah, when she was slave Leia. (laughs) She was terrified of of of, uh, <laughs> of what's his name. That's true, I guess. Fat ass. Uh, Java. Thank you. Java. I would be too. I mean, he had a big and, ass tongue. And, yeah. and let's let's. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna but do that. <laughs> <laughs> now, Luke, Luke, the, the kid that played Luke, I could have done without him. Yeah. Well, that's that. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't want to sit here and nitpick uh, all of Obi Wan, but yeah, there's. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, like in the, but the going back to Reva, so like it was things that like things that to me that are, are starting to cheapen Star Wars a little bit is how basically now lightsabers are just a weapon that anyone can survive from. Right. And so you see Reva get stabbed as a child and then stabbed as an adult both times through the chest. And Meanwhile, she lives. Oh my God, sitting here like, what the fuck, man? Yeah. <laughs> the Jedi Master got, you know, took out his, his appendix with one and he's dead. Yeah. 
and well, then, he, he has a he has a special skill set. He know. does. Yeah. And then it's it's it, it, you know it's just things like we're going back to the writing. It's things that think that bother me. It's like so I didn't believe Reva's character anyway. I was like, but if right. you get to a point where you're giving you're obviously giving her a redemption arc, and at the end it's like, oh, one good D by me not killing this child. Spoiler alert redeems me from a decade of killing Jedi and younglings, the things, same people I'm supposed to be avenging. And so it's like, no, like you're a war criminal. If you live, someone's probably going to kill you, you know? Right. Uh, well, so who's, who's going to kill? You got Obi-Wan who doesn't kill anybody, right? Right. I mean, I guess he did kill a few people. I'm just saying like but, if, if Vader had not. But he didn't kill the right died, person. In the Return of the Jedi. Sorry, I'm frozen again. Uh, so if so if Vader had not died at the end of Return of the Jedi, what do you think is going to happen to him? You know, it's like it's been 19 years where he's just been fear mongering everybody and killing everybody left and right. So it's like, yeah, he's a war criminal. He's but he, die. he had a ch- he had a change of heart. <laughs> so let me ask you this question. All right, yep. spoilers. He's he's Cap- seen, he's Catholic. Went to confession. He's all right. He's all right. If you haven't seen oh, Obi Wan, forgive me, Father. It's been two hundred thousand years since my last confession. Why? Why do you think? I think there's multiple answers to this. Why do you think Obi Wan didn't fucking kill Vader? It was silly, really, because it's like well, why because that point. I mean, I get it, obviously, ob- obviously, there's a fucking trilogy of movies about to happen. But like, as from, from a writing perspective, why would they put him in a position in which he very easily could have solved the fucking problem? Well, let's say spoiler alert first. No, fuck. Yeah, yeah, I already did that. You were, okay. you, were, you, you were talking over me, Jack, when I was giving the spoiler warning. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> but like, well. Say you're sorry. No, fuck off. <laughs> uh, so, but like, but why, why would you write that? I mean, obviously the battle was, was really cool. I, I, that scene was amazing. Like the, the duality of the blue and red sabers on his helmet. And then, it, it, and also that throwback to that fight that, from Clone Wars. Like it was awesome. I thought it was really, really cool. And, and hearing the modulated voice wavering between or James Earl Jones and, and Hayden Christensen, I thought it was actually a very, very cool touch. And that whole bit of like, it wasn't your fault. It's not you, it's me type of right. shit. You know what I mean? Like I thought that was actually was was beautiful. And that's probably that was, my, my, that was George part. Costanza. Yeah. I thought that was prob- probably my favorite part of the entire series was that literally that 30 seconds, right? Well, I think but I, I think like re- it's just it's it just for me it's 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 so stupid. Like <laughs> like what Jedi in their right mind wouldn't have killed Vader in that moment. Right. Well, I mean, it's because, just like it, 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 episode three or two, like the whole fire thing with Vader and Obi-Wan. A lot yeah. of that was just written for convenience. It's like, wait, for you sure. just literally saw Vader pull like four people out of their homes and kill right. them. And you're it telling me nice. Vader can't pull Obi-Wan across the flames because, oh, my God, they're big flames. Like, no, it's stupid. And like, and even the character. I, I, I thought the same thing. Yeah, even, even the character that you know, later dies, uh, that's running the Underground Railroad type thing that's helping him, you know, she shows up out of just plot convenience. It's like, oh, you stopped at the road check. I'm going to show up and kill these stormtroopers. Then, like, you know, what, 10 minutes later, she just happens to find Obi-Wan again. It's like, oh, now you're in trouble with Vader. I'll make a distraction so you can escape again. It's like, it, it doesn't mean it, it's things like that that bother me. of just like, oh, there, there was some, I'll, 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 yeah, it, there was weak, lazy writing. Yeah. There was, there was lazy writing. But I, I think the reason he didn't kill Vader, it, it, the, the scene where they're going back and forth in the Clone War, was it Clone Wars? Where they, where him, him and oh, where him and, uh, yeah, right where they're they're boom, where they're fighting, where he's training him, yeah, training him, and he, and he and he tells Anakin, a Jedi's job is not to kill, is to protect, and he says that, and then when when he's when he's fighting, he's fighting Vader, not Anakin, he's fighting Vader, and then when the mask gets ha- when the mask is half. He sees Anakin, and he he has he, he, Anakin is his friend, not Vader. So I think that's why he decides not to kill him. That's all. That's all I got. Could have saved a lot of lives though if he just would have killed him. There's you know there was there was one uh oh, one two thing. So one of the memes I've loved that I've seen probably three times now is uh, in Return of the Jedi when Luke confronts Obi-Wan again. He's like, you told me Vader betrayed and murdered my father. And then the meme is Obi-Wan going, it's literally what he told me. (laughs) 
<laughs> uh, and uh, and then shit, what was I gonna say? I always lose track. Yeah, that's actually kind of cool. I, I I didn't think about that, and I haven't seen that meme yet. Like that's actually interesting. Oh, yeah. Like he's like, yeah. yeah, Vader killed your father. Yeah, that's actually fucking awesome. Yeah. Now the that only, I think about it, that's the cool. only the only line that was not addressed in the Obi Wan series that if they do make a season two, I'm sure they will. Is that you? Know, because I'm sure that Obi Wan will see Vader again. Is that in Return of the Jedi when Luke looks at Vader and says, "Come with me," and then Vader says, "Obi Wan once thought as you do. You don't know the power of the dark side." So there, ha- I was surprised that we did not get some kind of talk with. Like I expected that almost when when they had that last standoff and they're just standing there. I expected mm-hmm. Vader to be like, "Anakin, you know, like come with me. Like you can still." Be yourself. And that, and that conversation never happened, and I expected it to happen there, and it didn't. Uh, yeah, because I I think that Obi Wan will never give up on Anakin, trying to be Anakin. But you never know. I I, I would say it. He just should give up. Spoiler. Yeah. Alert. Well, interesting right. though. I mean, I I don't I don't know how they can make a season two. Honestly, like I I, I think- don't. Like I think I that think, there might be a way to incorporate and have it, it be like Obi Wan light, you know, like having like main, he not be yeah. like the main focus of the story, but I agree. like all the people locked up downstairs in that basement, who I'm pretty sure are not dead, all those yeah, Jedi. Would, and, me, but, someone who really liked the Force Unleashed, I would like it if they did like skip ahead like five years and make more of a a Force Unleashed movie. Yeah, to where Vader is training, you know, a secret apprentice. And that's one of his tasks is to find Obi Wan. You know, I would like that better. I, I don't well, want to see you. Obi. I, I don't want to see Obi Wan and and uh, Vader fight again. Because hmm. no, we get. I don't think they can. Yeah, yeah that's I, mean, it. It's, I mean, I don't think they should have inter, any interaction at all anymore. Well, I I, I agree with you on, on that, and I think I think that's it. And but there, there's so much story that they could entertain, and and knowing what they want to do with other shows, there's a ton of storylines in there. I mean, there's an entire storyline about um, Thrawn and and Vader, mm-hmm. um, and, and that 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 could be a, a very clever way of bringing Thrawn into the real world, the real I, real world series, um, because Thrawn I, is is one of the only oh. people in the galaxy that knows who Vader is, because uh, right. he knew him before, and then he, and he found he knew him after. It'd be very hard. You could do it, but. Uh... Because this is when Thrawn is still not Thrawn yet, like he's not powerful yet, like because you now because if it's no longer those old uh, right. those old stories are no longer canon, so you'd have to do it before Rebels, and because you we now know that you know Thrawn's probably not going to come back into the Ahsoka right. series long after Vader's dead. True, so it's, it's a it'd be hard. Yeah. yeah. Well, moving on from Star Wars talk, I did see. Oh, you uh, opened up the, the can of worms now. This is this I, is an old bruise now. I, I <laughs> I'm kidding. I. <laughs> Uh, I did watch Man from Toronto with uh, Kevin Hart and um, Woody Harrelson. Okay, Never it's on. I think one. it's. I think it's on Netflix. It's just a one of those free movie type things. It's actually really funny and entertaining. It's a, te- a typical Kevin Hart movie, uh, except for the ending. It's just it. It oh, should have cool. ended like ten minutes early. Like that's the last just, ten minutes, just, just to stop it. Then yeah. it's just like a. <laughs> what is the? What is the point? Of the last ten minutes, did you have to go a certain amount of time, <laughs> right? To get paid. I, I, I'm like going, okay, this stopped being interesting. Like, ten, okay, there's it. There's your ending. Wrap it up. Shake hands. All that stuff. The last, it, I, it could be. It could have been longer. It could have been shorter. But I'm like going, all right, this part is just brutal. Yeah. Just stop. Just stop. It's not funny. I didn't even know he had a movie out. <laughs> I didn't. Either, I, yeah. did, I didn't. My wife. <laughs> my wife said something. Hey. Have you heard about this movie? I go, what movie is that? Should Kevin Hart? I go, he's made another movie. When does this guy sleep? And uh, he's funny. Said, like he's a he's, funny dude. He, he's hilarious, and he's hilarious in this movie. And it's 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 got the beginning. The first half of the movie is hilarious, and Woody Harrelson's great in it. Wait, fucking Woody Harrelson? What? Kevin Hart and Woody Harrelson? Yeah. John says, "Have you ever watched the Ramblecast?" <laughs> What's the point? Of the last ten minutes. Yeah, uh, I showed that I, I texted you guys that I recommended. So when my when my folks were here a few weeks back, my dad watched the first two episodes of The Old Man, which is on FX or Hulu, with uh, um, 
relationship, Jeff Bridges. Jeff and Bridges. Oh, right. I, I had not seen that advertised and not heard anything about it. And my dad, you know, he's a typical like action kind of guy. So he, you know, he loves Jason Statham movies and, and John Collin Van Dam and all that. So I usually don't take his opinion too seriously about like, he, he, li- he likes the, he likes the classics. Yeah, he likes he likes anything. It's just like let's just beat the shit out of people and then Steven, Steven Seagal. Yeah, Steven Seagal. Seagal. Yeah, he loves all those kind of movies. And so I usually don't take his recommendations too seriously. But you know, he's like, I think you should watch this. This is actually pretty good. And I was like, and then as he, I, I kind of ignored him. And then he said, Oh, John Lithgow's in it. I went, Why didn't you fucking lead off with that? I was like, If John Lithgow's in it, I'm gonna watch it. You know. Well, Jeff Bridges and, too. I mean, I yeah, I have a lot of respect for Jeff. Bridges, but if you say Jeff Bridges by himself, I'm like, oh, okay, I'll give it a shot. But you say John Lithgow and Jeff Bridges, I'm gonna watch it. I don't know why I just like Jeff. I like John Lithgow. I always have. Well, because he's a great actor. He's a great actor. So anyway, so there's only three episodes released. Uh, I think another one drops tomorrow. Um, and it's really good. And basically what it is is he is not really ex-CIA, but he's kind of like a CIA spook. And he was he was in the Afghan war in the 80s you know, against Russia. And he's just been living secretively in the U.S. ever since. And somehow his... Uh, like death warrant from the U.S. government gets reactivated, and uh, so it's a, it's a burn notice. It's something, yeah, like that. And uh, but it's 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 good. It's really good. Uh, and there's uh, third episode. There's a little bit of a like, oh, I didn't see that coming. You know, so it's like that. It, you know, so I'm really liking it. Well, my wife canceled a Hulu just before uh, Murders in the Building Two came out. Hmm. She goes, "Oh, should I have ca- saved, saved it?" I go. Yeah, I got so much to catch up on. Well, well, why don't we wait a month and we'll, you know, let me catch up on these other shows. But then I, you, you sent me that because I want I had seen previews for it before, when I still had Hulu. I said oh, that's something I want to watch, and then she canceled. I go, oh fuck it. Yeah, hang yeah, on. They, before you they... go too far off topic here from this though, have, have you guys have <laughs> have you <laughs> fuck have you ever watched a Steven Seagal movie now? No, wow, not hi. A new one. No. Well, hi, no, I've well, not. Hi. Um, you, 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 <laughs> you catch on to some really weird shit. Like, oh, he's a weird, he's a weird, he's dude. A weird dude, dude. Like, have you ever, have you ever seen the meme of like Steven Seagal running? <laughs> <laughs> it's really awesome. He is the world's weirdest runner. Yeah. But like in uh, in all of his like his shitty like, 80s and early 90s martial arts movies, like. There's always like that musical montage of him right. like, training. You're right. The fucking best. And like, honestly, God, like you should go back because I, I watched all these movies when I was a kid. And obviously, I wasn't high when I was a kid, but now that I am, and I go back and watch these movies, it's actually super, super entertaining. Like <laughs> Steven Seagal is a fucking weird dude, and he runs like a. Well, you should you should if if you're looking for some fun, search Steven Seagal on Saturday Night Live. Hosting Saturday Night Live because okay. they'll talk about him, uh, like with the Hans and Franz character. Oh yeah, oh, making, yeah. like you're a week. He goes, oh, he was. I forget who it was. But he said he was like he wouldn't do it. He goes, no, I, yeah, I'm, I'm better than Arnold Schwarzenegger. And they're like, oh, yeah, but that's not the joke. He wasn't getting the joke. He, he mm-hmm. just, he, he, they just said he's one strange guy. Just every every interview about him on that show, it's like. It was like he's like the worst host in the history of Saturday. There it is, right here. Thirty years ago, Steven Seagal's hilariously awful SNL episode, yeah, aired in nineteen ninety one because he didn't get the jokes. Yeah, I think he's banned from SNL. There's only like four or five people that are permanently like banned. That he's I c- I can't believe he was married to was it Kelly Le- uh, Kelly LeBrock? Is that yeah, him? yeah, uh, really? weird science. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> yeah. Oh my god! She, she I did, learned she... so much about myself after watching Weird Science. <laughs> <laughs> she she did that commercial don't hate me because i'm beautiful i still yeah. use that catchphrase yeah. today don't hate me because i'm beautiful uh so jeremy says uh stupid question but who is today's steve seagal um, i don't think there is one like the closest action hero like right now is probably still uh jason Statham, but he's a better actor yeah. than steven seagal <laughs> i think you have to be because because chuck norris let's face it yeah not not a great actor Awful, right? Actually. He's an awful actor, but he's Chuck Norris. True, y- you go with it, but uh, you, you know, I, you know who I saw recently that it blew me away. Um, uh, fuck, what's his name? Um, the guy who played Arrow on the WB or the uh, oh, yeah, CW. yeah, um, Steve Steven, um, 
Stephen uh, Amel. Stephen Amel. Amel. He's my he's my hero because he cussed out. He he told Dean Spanos off. Nice. nice. So I saw I follow him on on TikTok or Instagram, one of those things, and and he's been on this show on FX called Heels, which is about like a independent wrestling league where I think he and his brother like are wrestlers or whatever. And I haven't seen it, but I knew he was in I've never that even show. Heard of it. Um, and I saw a clip of him like, and he was like with his daughter, and he was like on set, and like he had he was jumping into an ice bath, and dude, he got fucking huge, like jacked, like he was he was an always in shape guy in uh, uh, when Arrow was was like, but he wasn't like anything crazy, but he is well, like, he a had wrestler. to be because he really, so he's that big. Yeah, What's like, like it, I, it, it blew me away. You said pull it it's cr- it's it's crazy how like actors do that. It's like like the two I can think of is Zachary Levi and um, oh yeah, yeah John John Kaczynski. Like both of them, like Zachary Levi put on like thirty pounds of muscle to play uh, the lightning bolt person. Uh, Flash. No, Shazam, 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 Shazam. Shazam. Yeah, like he, he and then um, same thing like uh, Zachary. Uh, not Zachary. Uh, uh, John Krasinski. John Krasinski put on muscle to play uh, 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 Jack Ryan. Yeah, and you look at him. You look at him. I mean, watch The Office, and then watch him now. Like you, you can tell he's so well. It's watching. it's funny. He was in, he was in a movie. Was it was that uh, the thing where the four where the uh, the uh, the ambassador got killed and where they were tortured. The four people uh, was it Lebanon or? It was. It was an. Uh, they had hearings on it and everything. It's Benghazi. Oh yeah, yeah. Movie about that. He's in the. He's in a movie with. He's, he's special forces with the guy that plays Roy from The Office. Right. Now we know Roy. He, he, like you said, no way Roy could take him now. No, right. Are we reading something? What are we doing? Jesus. Oh. Yeah, the dude's fucking huge. <laughs> like, look at him. Look at his balls. Yeah, his balls, <laughs> right? He's he's got big balls. That's it. <laughs> but like, like he was he got ridiculously large, and and he did a lot of his own stunts too. So going that, that I brought that up going back to the, the original know, that, question. That picture on the right, though, I think he's skipping leg day. Is he? Look at look at um, there on the right, on the right. Look at look in the back side of his here? legs there. Oh, right here. The big oh yeah. Look at him. He's skipping leg day. Look at those little calves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, when you get that big, it, well, it's like actors that put on weight. You had like De Niro who put on what fifty pounds to play uh, uh, Jake Lamotta, right? You know, it's just you don't even recognize him. I mean, to put on fifty pounds, they're just like, "What did you eat?" Just kept shoving crap in my, you know, and it's not healthy to do that. Well, it's, it's like right. I remember uh, uh, they shot uh, Tom Hanks. Go back, to Tom Hanks when when he did uh, Castaway. Right, is that you know he they shot all of the fat scenes like four <laughs> months before, like me you know, when he's just like a look a regular guy, and then they yeah. gave him four months to lose all that weight. And I remember him saying like all he ate every day was he ate an apple I think in the morning, and then he ate a handful of bran in the afternoon. That was all he was allowed to have, and you know and he dropped like fifty or sixty pounds. You know, it's just yeah, it, it's uh. It's I, I, I couldn't have the discipline to do that. There's no way in hell I, I could eat just two uh, things gonna, a day like that. You're gonna you're gonna pay me twenty million dollars? I'll do it. True, that's true. Oh, going back to people who run funny, I think I actually uh, mentioned Cage. this years ago. Like, oh yeah, Nick Cage. Funny? Yeah, you you but watch like, Nick watch... Cage in the first in the, the first Independence movie. They hmm. they should have cut that scene out. I think he's running. He's oh, you I'm mean... <laughs> Well, that, you mean it, uh, National it? Treasure? National Treasure, <laughs> right? They should. There's a running scene. I it ruined the whole movie for me. I go. I can't watch that again. I, yeah. I'd have well, to fast forward it. Someone who was like I, I mentioned for like Natalie Portman is the one that always irks me. She's a straight arm runner. So like she's running, but she never moves her arms. They just stay straight the entire time. And it's like, and I I'm hoping the new Thor movie that someone actually said like, hey, we need you to run and we need you to move your arms because you're running with a hammer. Speaking so, of getting jacked, she got she got fucking swole. yoked. Yeah. She showed it. She oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Love Cage that. is definitely not, the not best bad for a 41 year old. Yeah. Uh, and I've said this before, like everyone out there, Jeremy, like go watch Nick Cage's new movie. It's actually really good. 
the, yeah, uh, you said the, that. Yeah, the weight, the weight of massive talent. It's it's actually really good. He had some good. I have early an on. interesting, fun fact to share that I can't share publicly about. <laughs> oh, just teasing the listeners. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in the private chat here. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to think anything else I watched. Uh, been busy. Work. Busy, busy, busy. I got like I got thrown like a crap ton of demos this week, and so like I was like, oh, I should be pretty good this week, and then it's like, no, 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 we got to do this guy, this guy. I'm like, son of a bitch, can't catch a break. Can't catch. It's a just break. been what so hot it? and humid here. I haven't felt like doing anything. I don't have any ball powder, so it's like fuck. Can't go outside. It's actually been quite good here this week. Uh, it's been probably in the low eighties or, or the high seventies, so not too bad. I do. Find, I, I do. Have you been seeing the people that the plan now? The, the people on the West Coast they want to uh, they want to start taking water from the Mississippi. Of course they do. Well, I mean, I, you know, it, it's one of those. It's one of those things that we can make pipelines shipping oil from one end of the country to the other. Why can't we? Because the South really? does. We get a lot of we get a lot of water in the South. So why couldn't you build a pipe? you know, from one end of the country to the other, because you, I mean, to one, I think it's, well, you look at Lake Mead and how much water has just been drained from it. It's like, well, people stop moving to fucking Las Vegas. You're in the desert. You know, that's why yeah. it's draining. It's like, you you can't just say like, oh, let's just ship one water from one end of the country to the other, which is a good idea. But you also need to start saying like, hey, we're, we're capping the population at this area at this because it's not sustainable. Well, for, that, you know, that whole Arizona... Nevada and Southern California was not meant for all those people to live there. No, of course not. It never rains. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it, my whole time growing up, I, I think I had one rain out playing Little League my whole life. <laughs> yeah, right. Because it never rains. I mean, it, I, I still remember back when I was in kindergarten, and I, to this day, I don't run the water when I brush my teeth. Because we had someone say, they go, someday in California, because it doesn't rain enough and there's too many people moving here, we're not going to have enough water. So you got to conserve water. I still remember that. I'm not saying there's not climate change. Yeah. I'm just saying that wasn't meant for people to live there. I think Nick just saw my message. I did. I did. I'm reading. I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's a small world. <laughs> it, it is. So, so that's, huh? Yeah. So really, so good for Nick Cage. Yeah. Great for Nick Cage. Yeah. yeah. I don't get it, but I, I like sharing stories, but that's not my uh, not my story to share. You know what? I'll share it next week as my story. Okay, <laughs> that's fair. Anyway, but yeah, I, I just find it because people in the uh, admit they're like, a, we're not shipping the west, we're not shipping water to the west coast. Fuck them. <laughs> that's how we get along here in America. Fuck you. <laughs> we're not sharing. That's coming from a guy who used to live on the west coast too. Yeah. It, it, yeah. I, I I did tell my my because my dad always had that he goes he goes you guys get a lot of rain back there he goes what they should do is just build a pipeline you do what I go I go screw you get your own water because <laughs> well, I mean, Colorado at the time was cutting California off and I just because right. they're like because they knew eventually hey we're running out of water right so, and it, and that's one like it's like a the front range which is everything east of you know the mountains. Which is what I technically live in. Sprint Ridge. Most of the water here is just from the little rivers that come down from the mountains. But they've even built an aqueduct now coming over the mountains into the Front Range that's tapping into the Colorado, and and that's what I mean. It's like because the Front Range is blowing up, like you know Colorado Springs all the way into Cheyenne, Wyoming. It's like it's going to be the next major, you know, metropolitan area. Yeah, and and it's uh, it, it is by it's land. Gonna, yeah, it's going to be uh, crazy in that. You know, if the population booms here, that means less water for Arizona and Southern California. And Cal do it. Yeah. And California's got a pickle because it's one of those things like I've read for years now. You know, one of the reasons why California is always fucked is because you have a lot of there's a the difference between Dang liberals. Well, it's not liberals, but it's like it's a difference between someone who's a conservationist <laughs> and an environmentalist, you know. And yeah, I'm a conservationist. I think most people are. But sure. it's like, you know, I'm an, I'm an I, 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 would, I disagree with you on that, Nick. I don't think most people are. Or what? Oh, Conser conservation. Conservationalist. 
I think uh, more people should be. Is, yeah, I'm a conversationalist. A conversationalist. But, yeah. yeah, but like, yeah, you know, like most of the reservoirs in California are in the north, northern end of the state. But the thing is, is that what I've always been reading about is that there's a little fish on this main river in the north that's uh, near extinction. And so instead of like keeping the reservoirs full for the dry seasons, they let them out every year. So these this fish does not die off. It's like so every year they say they're in a drought. It's like, well, stop fucking you know, letting your water drain out into the Pacific, you know. And it's just like, it's things that you need to sacrifice. Like, do you want everyone to have water and do you want the crops fed or do you want this little fish to live? Like you have to choose. I, and, I get it. I, I fuck the fish, right? Well, I mean, I, yeah, I know, I know want, someone's you don't, want, you don't want the fish to die off. That's true. But still, it's like, it's a little, it's from what I understand, it's like a little minto, min, minnow. It's like, a, it's a little bitty fish. It's like, it's, we can do without it. It's okay. Mm. Unless you're, unless you're, you know, that fish, then you're like, Hey, this is bullshit. Hey, the yeah. But, you know, you look at Vegas, you know, they just got an NFL team, you know, a couple of years ago. They, they, they're they trying to get an NBA team. They're going to take they're trying to take the A's from Oakland, building more hotels, more people visiting, more more showers, more that you can put the sign up there saying we, we want to conserve water here. Only use one towel, only only take one shower a month, whatever it is, you know, because you, you go to a hotel now. It's always about conserve this, conserve oh, yeah. that no yeah. matter where oh, yeah. you're at. Oh yeah, crack me up. Like I, I read one the other day, a friend of mine posted, he goes, anyone else getting these fucking emails like every day where it's like, set your thermostat at 78, try to conserve electricity. And then the next email I get is buy an electric car. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> fuck! You know, like... Well, yeah, but, I mean, you know, I, 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 anybody who has a, the, uh, the Nest thermostat, mm, uh, like in, if, in my you know, uh, was it National Grid? I think is the uh, yeah National Grid's my electric provider, and they and they have all these deals where you can tap in. They, you can allow them to tap into your 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 Nest, um, and you can allow them to make adjustments for you. Um, and they, if you do, the incentives are like either like a fifty dollar gift card or like a hundred like what, whatever bullshit. And they're trying to like uh, trying to um, make those changes. But what was interesting is you have you have full autonomy, you have full power of. of of going back to what you wanted if you want to, but like I was like, hey, why not? I might as well. I'll take a free fifty dollars gift card for. I think I think ours is programmed to save us money because sometimes I go, why is it so hot? Why does it always go off when it's hot? And it's like all of a sudden it's hot in the house. I go, what happened to the air? It's it's because yeah. downstairs we're not running the air conditioner. We have two units. We just bought blinds for all the windows and we have everything shut. Yeah. And for now, I, and I'm gonna go get some. Uh, we have a window way up top that. You know, I can't get a uh, line up there, so I'm gonna get some of that stuff that goes over the glass that locks the sun, I, and it stays cool downstairs. Yeah, it it does. I, we don't need it. I just have a fan on. And it's, right, it's fine. Uh, Jeremy asked in the chat, asking about my um, uh, solar, panels. solar panels. Yeah, um, are they worth it so far? Yeah, dude, absolutely. Like I haven't been able to see the math yet, just because it, it, they've just installed them back in May, and like I, I'm adjusting to how much I use them. Uh, or how much I use my everything else in the house. I'm very I'm so much more conscious of the power that I use now. That's number one. Uh, number two, I look just looking at the numbers. I've, I've got about a 93 percent offset of my. Do you own them out? Do you own them outright, or do you? Uh... Well, I'm financing them. Yeah. So, I but it's but it's not it's not a company that comes around and they they no. get the money for the okay. No. no, no. So at the end of the year, I'll get a fuckload of tax uh, benefits off that. Um, so far, it's been great. So, like, I mean, I, I have central air, which runs on electricity, and during the day, the solar panels can can power it, and then some, which is fantastic. Um, they and it also powers the power wall. So when the sun goes down, the power wall controls the house. And I'm probably nearing the end of the battery. I will say, like during the summertime, when the, when the air conditioner ru- uh, runs, um, I use a lot more, right? But when, but as an example, right now, yeah, my power wall is drained already since you know since five o'clock just because it's been my well, i know when i when i was trying to convince cindy to get them we had the treat those you know huge pine trees next it, we only had sun on our house about six hours a day yeah now it's, it's from the tough. time that it well now it's from the time the sun comes up the sun comes down oh, yeah, I, took them all I, down. Said, I go i go see i told yeah, you it's it, I mean, in every state's different right with their tax incentives and whatnot but it's to me it's been a no-brainer um I actually, I think the ones that I got, I think they actually look nice, which is interesting because most of them don't look that great. But the the finish of these actually look really nice. 
Um, I've also have since getting I installed the car charger, right? It's like a, a wall mounted car charger outside. So I'm charging my car, you know, with the sun, which, which is great. You know, like and I, I, actually I have it set so my car charges at two o'clock in the morning. That way I'm actually at off peak pricing. So my car is charging on grid essentially. Uh, but everything else is during the day is is off grid because of either direct solar to the to the inverter or the power wall to the inverter, which has been it's been great. Um, the only thing I might think about doing down the road is adding a second power wall, but those are really pricey, so I don't know if I'm gonna do it or not. We'll see. I, I, I'll yeah. be curious. I'll be curious come winter, like how much can it store because you know you get so much less solar time because like I I have. Um, I got a switch back in my backyard path and I put little solar panel lights out mm. and I noticed, you know, like <clears throat> this time of year, they're on all the way to roughly like 4 a.m. You know, because they charge right. all day and then they're on all night. But in the winter, I noticed this past winter that they were only, as soon as the sun goes down, yeah. like around 8, 39, they're out by 11 p.m. I was like, oh, yeah, that's interesting. These are, it's it's pretty it's pretty um, interesting to like, watch. I'm I'm obsessed with watching it throughout the day, just kind of see out you know, what's being absorbed and what's not and whatnot. I got, on a normal sunny day, uh, it's not too hot. The battery will charge up by one o'clock in the afternoon, and then the battery's full. And then from that point forward, it's, it only it then self regulates. It only pulls down power from the panels for what's being used in the house. Um, and obviously, you use less electricity. I will personally be using less electricity in the winter because I have gas heat as opposed right, to right. electric heat or anything okay. like that. So um, that's how we, that, that's how ours is. Yeah. And, and then, and then I'll be looking at necessarily maybe selling energy back to the grid at that point. So, no. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, so as a hybrid EV car owner, uh, just having the stats is a huge incentive to care about your power usage. I don't know about the battery replacement or cost of materials yet. Yeah. Yeah, you're not gonna have to worry about that shit. By the time you have to worry about it, you'll be getting a new car. These batteries <laughs> in these cars are 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 they they they're at least ten years. The technology's really improved. Yeah. You even mentioned the solar lights, Nick. I remember when we first moved here, we got solar lights. <laughs> they last it, it, would, it would last like an hour. Right. I go. This is this is useless. Now they like you said, they're on all night long. Yeah. Uh, going back to the A's, uh, John's the retired guy says the A's got a good vote from the environmental group today. To help them stay in Oakland, I hope they stay in Oakland. I mean, I, I was a big A's fan in the uh, early '70s and all that stuff. But they've been in Philadelphia, they've been in Kansas City, now Oakland. They don't need to move again. They gotta stay in Oakland. Yeah, it, it, they've already lost their football team. It's bu- it's it's bullshit when teams move. Even though I would take it, I would take a team to San Diego any day, but it's just part of the business. But no, if 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 they don't get the A's. They'll definitely get because the NBA uh, Major League Baseball said they'd waive the relocation fee for the A's to move to Vegas. I said, well, that's either I think they're putting pressure on Oakland to build a stadium for the A's, which is bullshit. If stadiums are that if, if study if stadiums are big money makers, why aren't the owners mm-hmm. building their own stadiums? Exactly. Robert, I've, always, I've always yeah I've always hated that the fact that. They always make the taxpayers make the fucking stadium, and then the owners sell the stadium to some fucking corporate, you know, for the name. And it's like, and then the the you know the taxpayers don't see any of that money back. It's like, yeah, do a pull up page out of Robert Kraft's book, right? Part of part of the problem, the right page. Part of the pro- part of the problem at San Diego, people don't talk about. Chargers wanted two expansions for Qualcomm, so they did it. At millions and millions of dollars, and then they said, "Okay, well now we want a new stadium," which pissed the politicians off in San Diego. So when they were talking about, it, they said, "Okay, who's going to?" There's seventy million dollars left on those two expansion. Who's going to pay that off? They said, "Well, you guys, the city." And they're like, going, "Look, we can't, we can't justify that. You, you all that different stuff. Plus, the city was losing fifteen million dollars a year on the stadium." Tearing it down saved them, and they they sold the land to San Diego State, which is built and building their own stadium. But it just it's just so stupid. Yeah, anyway. I read I read a uh, it's a, a non confirmed rumor that UCLA and I think USC USC are kind of thinking about joining the Big Ten. I'm like, what? 
So basically, they're going to try to because you know it's getting to where you know the SEC is like the the major conference in college football right yeah. now, and so they're trying to try to do it towards like the Big Ten and the SEC are going to be like the two main conferences. From well, now the Pac twelve has really dropped in stature. Oh, it has. Yeah, it's crazy how like it was. It was great. Like you had Oregon and Stanford and like a uh, you know a couple of really good solid teams in there just a few years yeah, ago exactly. in LA. All kind of just sucked. Well, the the good thing for if it does happen, then San Diego State could move to. The mm. Pac-12, because keeping them out of the Pac-12 was USC and UCLA because they got so many players from San Diego. But I, I, Look at I, all your star players from San Diego were going up there because they would say, look, do you want to play in the WAC or the Mountain West, whatever right. shitty conference they're in, or do you want to come play in the Pac-12? Anyway. Yeah, but it's, it's one of those weird things like, yeah, I look forward to that USC Rutgers rivalry. You know, it's like, yeah, there you go. <laughs> like, oh, fuck. Rutgers. Yeah. Well, that's like San Diego State. They, Rutgers. they play Wyoming. They play Air Force. It's like Boise. Yeah. Boy, well, Boise's not bad. But, you know, but they're, it, well, I, I'm hoping it happens just because San Diego State can move into a better and they're not traveling to Wyoming. They're not, nothing gets Wyoming. Don't get me wrong. Anyway, it's but all about it, the dollars. It's, it's, it, it's weird because, like, you know, I mean, I'm uh, Colorado State is, you know, the, the college around here, and you also have Colorado. But, you know, they're – they're compared to the SEC, I mean, they're worlds apart. You know, it's just like you can barely, you know, barely even fill a, a 40,000-fan stadium, whereas in the SECs are, like, all over 100,000. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what the hell? Right. Well, you just – you have you – have, you have, Alabama and uh, it Georgia. In the east, Georgia, in the east, Clemson. in the east, well, Clemson's ACC. Okay. But yeah, in the in the SEC East, you have the the big three are Georgia, Tennessee, and Florida. In the Western Conference, you have wait, Alabama. Wait, wait. How, how did Tennessee get looped into that? Tennessee is still in the SEC, like a major school. Like it's like yeah, we've we've sucked in football for okay. All right, 20 okay. years, okay. but we're still one of the most winning <laughs> schools in the history of college football. Okay. Uh, All right. Okay. But uh, <clears throat> you, you uh, have a cool, you have, okay. You have a cool end zone. It's true. It's true. Okay. Yeah. But I look, uh, <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's still one of the biggest schools in the SEC as in like fans showing up. It's one of the biggest stadiums. Still moneymaker. Uh, it, we're, we're, we're turning it around. Right? We're turning it around. Damn it. Anyway, what else uh, is there doing tennis? But in the West, you have you know Auburn, Alabama, LSU, Texas A and M. Uh, so yeah, you have some really good schools. Oh yes, Quebec's empty stadium. Nordiques. Um, is it, wait, stadium? Uh, is 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 that where the uh, the Expos played? No, they played in Montreal. Oh, they played in Montreal. I didn't even know I Canada Pedro, had sports. Pedro Martinez play pitch for the Expos. Before yeah. Red Sox. Avalanche sure. won Stanley Cup. Woo woo. Oh, you suddenly go. now you're you're a Avalanche fan. Dude, no. the fucking hockey season, by the way. I mean, there's not nothing beats playoff hockey. Yeah. Nothing. Like it's I, I, I kind of feel sorry this for the season lasts like, too long though. But why long, the fuck that's does like, hockey last longer than basketball? You're the national champions for like <laughs> basketball lasts months. a long time. That basketball lasts a long time. No, I, you, you, I, they got to shorten that shit down. No, like I, they I need the, they, they need the games. This, this fall it was nice. It's basketball. Yeah. But, you know, I, I have we have a team here that's a great team. Hurricanes. I haven't been to a game in probably three or four years. Oh, uh, my Hartford Whalers shed some tears. <laughs> yeah. Again, I did. I wasn't here. People, I wasn't here when the team moved. Yeah. I didn't. St- I didn't steal your team. Uh, what well, they weren't. They were. They were they were just kind of like a. It was interesting, right? Because we obviously we had the Bruins in in Boston, but we, it was weird to have the Bruins and uh, Hartford in Hartford have two separate teams. So just, just it was it was weird. But that was back in the days of like Gordy Howe, you know. And then my, my the way my dad and we also had the Springfield Indians, which was like the AHL team. So it was like Hartford, then a half an hour north was the AHL. Now that the Springfield Guardians. Uh, they are not the Guardians. Where they are, they are the um, Falcons. Falcons. They changed okay. the teams of the Falcons. Um, yeah, because the Peregrine Falcon apparently is native to the area, which is weird. Um, 
but the uh, I remember my, my my dad used to make the joke whenever you go to the Indians games, he's like, "Oh, we're gonna go to a fight and a hockey match is gonna break out." <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, that was that was the AHL. Um, had a blast though. I mean, I, I used to be I, I didn't get to go to a lot of Bruins games growing up because I didn't live close enough to the city. But we we used to go to the the, uh, the Indians games and the Hartford Whalers games. Brass Bonanza, one of the best musical on uh, musical montages for a sports team. Look it up; it's fantastic. Hmm. Uh, yeah, we to, go ahead. I was like to answer your question, Jack. Though, like you know, I, I didn't grow up knowing anything about hockey. You know, and then like I, I said this before, like in Knoxville, we had a, a minor league team called the Speed. Now they're the Ice Bears, but uh, the only way you could get people to come was to have free beer for the first period. You know, so it was like, yeah, holy yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, so that's, that's, Let's go. that's why you go. You just go. Chris, Chris will be there. Let's go beat the, I'm let's in. go beat that old guy's ass. I'm in. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, let me at him. Let me at him. <laughs> put him up, put so, him up, put him up. <laughs> yeah. But like, as you know, especially now, because, you know, hockey and hockey and Broncos are king in Colorado. <clears throat> right. I'm not sure if you guys heard that or not, but I was saying, yeah, but the hockey yeah, and the Broncos it. are king in Colorado. Yeah. And so I've gone to two or three or more hockey games since I've lived here. And, you know, it's kind of like how I don't really like soccer that much, but I respect it. Like I get it, like why people like it. But when I watch hockey, I love it because it's like, it's really, a, 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 it's, it's soccer, but with violence. And uh, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the athletes are, are really cool too. I mean, I've, I've had the pleasure of meeting a lot of athletes. Yeah. But growing up in San Diego, all we had was minor league hockey. And it's funny because a lot of the kids, their the players, their kids, I went to school with them. My mom loves Lynn Ronson, this guy, and he gave her her stick. So I have actually have his stick, his his hockey stick, I should say. That's what she said. Hey, oh, <laughs> and his, and his balls. But, <laughs> but when when I first started working at the, the rink in, in La Jolla in San Diego, there were no adult teams. There were no youth teams at our rink. There was hockey was just like, okay, yeah, we it was skating, figure skating. Wayne Gretzky comes to the Kings. Boom. Now Southern California is huge in hockey just because one guy. One guy came to, I mean, obviously one of the great Powerful probably dude. the greatest player ever. But and they yeah. would they were smart. They came and played exhibition games in San Diego, which was smart because it built the interest. For the Kings, but which is so weird because, like, why? Why was um, soccer? I feel like soccer was so fucking popular in the eighties when I was growing up. Hey, yeah. like, like, well, no, but not even like, but we didn't have soccer in the United States. I mean, MLS no. didn't start until um, into the early nineties. Which, by the way, Apple TV Inc. No, there was there was there was there was soccer. Popular. In the 80s, because Pele came and played for the New York Cosmos, right? That was the 80s, or was that the 90s? It had to be the 80s. 80s. Yeah. Because when I was a kid, when I was a kid, I started playing soccer, and they said this is going to be the sport, the number one sport in America, because all of us playing soccer are going to grow up playing. And I love playing soccer. And the San Diego Soccer's, we had outdoor team and we had an indoor team the indoor team yeah. won 11 championships in 12 years which actually killed the indoor soccer league because all the other t cities couldn't we had we had we were the yankees of the time in soccer we had all the best players that we just co we, we just keep going and it was i mean it was i think the arena held 13,500 sold out yeah. every game because it was exciting but uh I and then now they're trying to they're trying to get a major league soccer team in San Diego, which I don't understand how it's so hard when Mexico it was right, is there. right fucking there. right there. Yeah, but check this out. So Apple TV booked a ten year contract with MLS, which oh, really? is interesting because uh, MLS has not been a huge money maker in the states. I mean, it's 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 sustaining itself, but it's not it's not growing at a nearly fast enough pace because. You look at it, it pales in comparison to like your Premier Leagues, Championship Leagues, and so forth and so on. But Apple TV bought 10 year rights to MLS. They're going to stream every single game to 30 different countries. That alone is going to increase the popularity of MLS as a league um, where more people might be attracted to come and play uh, because of how much airtime it gets. 
I, if um, San Diego got, got a team, I would watch the games. It'd be interesting, man. Like, it's going to be interesting. I mean, I was a season ticket holder for the Revolution for a couple of years. It was, it's fun. It's fun to go watch the games. I uh, think, was Prince a good soccer player? I knew he was good at <laughs> basketball. Let's go crazy. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> out there, out there. I mean, I, I, I think he gets sweaty. Hopefully, he had enough uh, gold bond you know, out there and wearing yeah. that purple velvet. You know, he has there. huge balls. You know, he does. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, he did. did. Yeah, he did. Womp, womp. It, it's womp, just womp. dust now. But <clears throat> all right, um, it's getting a little, a little late. And yeah, I think gotta, at this time we should, we should wrap this show up. I think we got, we got a couple of emails. Read, you didn't, you didn't yeah. read our oh. my message in the private chat, but we got two emails. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you, you I'll read them? them. I'll read them because you're not a good producer. Uh, <clears throat> oh, for your information, we have two emails. Yeah, there you go. See, let's get to them. Oh, I, John I'd says like get to uh, bed. Apple TV puts a Sunday baseball game on eight thirty in the morning. Here, they got Friday night baseball. They're not doing Sunday baseball. <clears throat> but uh, anyway. so we got we got two emails, and for everyone out there, you know, Matt's only been gone for one episode, and both of these are Matt centric. So I'm going to allow it, just out of respect for Matt. But after this, you can't talk about Matt anymore. Did, did you yeah. like? Did you like this one? Elvis, what Matt has left the building. Did we like this one? Oh, pretty good. I did. I did like. I did. I did like it, Jack. Yeah. It's more effort than he All put right, in so... his last seventeen drawings. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sure. So our oh, first email talent, is buddy. our first email is from Riley, uh, and I believe he is our friend from Australia. Hey, uh, Riley. Hey, and also uh, he didn't write to us. He you know, he wrote to Matt. So no, I can't fuck, think fuck Riley. Well. Fuck off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, he wrote, Matt, hope you're getting through all of your shit you talked about. You made me better. Even though we, even though Ain't you will be taking. Money. Yeah. I'm so I'm good still in love with you, honey. Everything will bring a change of jeans. So, so Nick has become the Matt where you just interrupt him. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> even though you'll be taking a break, you are still the fan favorite. So I was like, I already hated this email the minute I read yeah, it. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Why don't you go fuck okay, uh, okay. Say, say Matt takes a couple of months off, which is, yeah. you know, I have no problem with that. Is he still going to be the fan favorite? Yeah, no. Fuck no. I don't think he ever was. He just yeah. he never was. He never was. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, if I don't see you in the future, now this is true. If I don't see you in the future, I'll see you in the past year. So no, ah, ah, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah. Just, just we, just we thought we hated him. He went and redeemed himself yes, at the yeah, end. Yeah, yeah. And then he okay. says more, more Lego talk, please. Um, I, I don't think you're also saying him, but R- Riley could very easily be a, a female. That's true. That could be a female. That's true. Forgive me. That's if you true. Are. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Um, our. Next email is from our good friend, Randy. Hey, Matt. That's all, that's all the time we have. Sorry. <laughs> and, of course, it's too mad again. Yeah. Uh, all the best and enjoy your sabbatical. We will look forward to return whenever you're ready. Your nemesis, Randito. All right. There you go. A couple of odes to Matt. And if you'd like to send us an email... Send it to what is the email address? No idea. <laughs> R C A D cast at gmail.com. That's Once again, R C A D cast at gmail.com. All right. Well, wrapping it up, we like to th- this show is made possible by you, the patrons. We thank all our patrons, but at this time we're gonna thank five patrons. And I did a little th- I didn't do any artwork for them. But I, I said, oh, Jack is so excited for whatever the fuck he did. Look, he's giddy. <laughs> actually, he actually, I, I, I put in an effort. Look at him. He's happy. I, I, I did. I did put an effort. I'm looking at it going, OK, I probably should have put more of an effort into it. <laughs> 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 I did this just before we started recording. Uh, okay. But uh, it's it's a it's an Elvis thing. And we're at this time, we're going to thank uh, Hound Dog Eckhart. Oh, OK. Bossa Nova Tack from Paris. Diva Las Vegas, Joanne with the plan. I'm going to read my writing here. Return to sender, Ed, the creepy letter carrier. Oh, okay. good one. That was a good one. And let's see. Jailhouse Rock, Maggie the Magnificent. And Happy Endings, Robert Kraft. Nice. Okay. There you go. So I mean, we thank all the patrons. Might be the best 
the best one you've ever done yeah. in 2022. <clears throat> Who me or ever? Well, not ever. Then, I'll, then I'll I, let everybody else answer that question. Then I start thinking. I go. I go. Do I really want to do this every week? <laughs> I, I do. Ha- I do have the email password. I just keep forgetting to go on it. I have it somewhere. Yeah, I, I just. I. I don't know. I don't. But anyway, thanks for everyone who joined us in the chat. Uh, thanks for keeping us company. We'll be back sometime next week. Chris is going to be on vacation. True. It could be just Nick and I, but I'll try to get, line up uh, somebody else to join us. So. There's always three of us. Like you said, I'm easily replaced. Well, I'm not wrong, but you know. Yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> Chris, I meant to tell you. Uh, so Ralph, you know, has his Star Wars podcast, and he goes yeah. Jay from, he goes with another guy, which I've never met, but like Jay and Matt were guests, traders, um, <clears throat> on that podcast. And when they were closing out the podcast, uh, Ralph's co-host. Um, when Matt was promoting, like, oh, yeah, I'm on Owen and Brew's Barbecue, the guy was like, oh, my God, that's the best name for a Star Wars podcast <laughs> I've ever heard. <laughs> and I was like, Chris would be so happy right now. <laughs> Thank you very much. One might so say out there, it was a job well done. It is a well done. <laughs> <laughs> Getting those dad jokes now, Pat. All yeah. right, guys, that's all we got. Hasta luego. Great show, kids. One in a million. We're out of here. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. See ya.